I am just testing the audio and things like I usually do. Oh, yeah, sorry. I should put that back up. Okay. So let me just test the audio. Sorry, there's going to be some mic feedback for a second. So let me just test the audio. Sorry. Ah, oh, crap. Why do I sound like a robot? Office versus home is it's, its own conundrum, isn't it? So I'm just going to test it again real quick. Conundrum. Okay. Well, that sounded better. Hopefully. Maybe. I just don't want to get um, feedback, so I'm trying to like... Maybe. I just don't. Yeah. Okay. Good. 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 Okay. We're good. Awesome. Hello. Thank you for joining me. This is a very last minute kind of uh, stream. Maybe people Yay. will join me. Maybe they won't. I don't know. All right, so uh, the main reason I wanted to stream this isn't because um, I think it's like super amazing, um, but I my tablet <laughs> subscription ran out. <laughs> uh, hi, right click man, how's it going? So I typically use a um, piece of software called Tableau to do data visualization stuff. It's really slick. They offer an educational license. My um, educational license is gone right now for some reason, um, and I'm too lazy to reinstate it. So instead, I decided to explore Google Sheets, and Google Sheets actually is pretty fancy these days. You can actually do a lot. So I decided that I didn't want to, I should probably tell you where my data source is coming from in the first place, but uh, let me pull it up here. So, uh, here we go. Um, so I made a survey because I have a games user research lab that I'm in the process of building, um, which is amazing. Like I've been afforded this opportunity through a few different grants to be able to conduct user research for the games that my students make right here on campus. So I got to pick everything. Like I get to furnish the thing, I get to paint it, I get to do whatever. Um, and that's really daunting because what I find fashionable is not like what normal people find fashionable. So instead I decided to make a survey and I opened it up to the public. Um, I asked about what furniture I should buy, about who the respondents were. Um, I asked about participant furniture versus moderator furniture and window coverings and then paint. And the paint I was a little bit facetious with, I'll admit, because um, you know I'm not really gonna paint a wall Mountain Dew yellow. But I have the paint swatches, the possible paint swatches here that, I mean, like, I can choose any of these colors. Ooh, geez, they're all falling, right? I can choose any of these colors. That's a lot. So I kind of wanted a general idea of what to use. And the feedback, I had multiple choice plus an optional written feedback. And the written feedback was actually super helpful. Um, a lot of folks mentioned things that I hadn't considered, like... Mountain Dew Yellow is disgusting, right? Like, no one should have Mountain Dew Yellow anything. But actually, if you were serious about putting that behind a wall with the TV, that would cause eye fatigue in your participants, which I hadn't considered. It makes total sense. I just never really thought about participant eye fatigue. Um, yeah, all the colors all at once, right? Right, right click, man. Oh, that'd be horrible. Um, so I had a, 40, a total of 49 respondents, and then um, I need to put this little document together to send out to, uh, well, pretty much everyone in my department, um, partially out of curiosity to see what the results of the survey were, and also partially to have a sort of style guide so when we do go to purchase furniture um, and paint colors and all of that, then we can uh, have some sort of guideline to go off of. Um, so this stream is going to be rather dry. The reason why I started it is because I wanted someone to talk to about kind of how cool this free online web-based data analytical software is that, that Google provides. Like I, I knew about when you go to responses, you know, they give you this really quick knee jerk reaction, um, pie chart, which is fine. 
But what I didn't know is that when you go in and you open up a Google Sheet, you can actually go and make that look really fancy. I, I, this, this to me is, this gets the job done, right? This is really quick. All I've done is I've opened up the, uh, I've gone here and clicked on the Google Sheet. It pops it up into a new tab. Um, I've copied one column, which is, I'm starting here, um, who the respondent was, what they identified as. I also allowed respondents to fill in the blanks and define themselves as something else. Um, and so then I've gone into, uh, I believe insert, yes, insert chart. And then I pulled up, you can do, oh, they even say donut. So this looks very much like Microsoft Word, right? So I decided to do a pie chart because I like pie charts for visualizing percentages of a population, like, because a pie makes it seem like it's whole and then doing segments of that whole. Um, and then you can customize it because these colors, they're very Google, which, you know, I'm not complaining. Google has a very strong brand identity. It's great, but it's not very Ashley or very entertainment arts and engineering or very University of Utah. So I wanted to make it a little bit more University of Utah or very more my brand. I'm here because I love to hear Gur talk. I'm very interested in that line of work. Cool, right click man. I'm glad to see you here. Um, so my stream overall is a think aloud method. I mean, sometimes I'm tired and I just kind of play a game and screw around. But typically I do something called a think aloud method, which is used in games user research. This is probably the more boring side of games user research, but equally important. Yes, I'm at the University of Utah. I'm a professor at the University of Utah. Um, so I uh, think it's really important that instead of writing up long text-based documents that we get information and data to our design teams. In this case, the design team's like a literal interior design team, but I think it's really important that we present data in a very easy to read kind of way. Um, and so here we go. So this is gonna be rather dry. I'm not gonna play music on in the background because I forgot my headphones today and I don't want echoey feedback grossness. Um, so feel free to turn on music if you would like. So something really interesting. So when you do a pie chart, if you go into customize, you can actually put in a donut hole, which is really fun because um, they actually give you control over the size of your donut hole. And I brought in donuts today at work. So don't sugarcoat it. Ba -da 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 -da. Uh, I thought it was really appropriate if I like eat a donut on stream too. And I'm sure that'll get some viewers, right? Like, so there's my maple, my maple donut. This will be my lunch. Dunkin' Donuts. America runs on Dunkin', right? They did not sponsor the stream. No one sponsors the stream. So... A lot of people in games user research hate donut charts. I'm sorry, I'm talking with my mouth full. The pressure to put in content. My um, Zenimax branded juice for today. Don't worry, I'm not drinking alcohol on campus. It is just coffee. Um, so this actually, so I used to make donut charts in um, either Illustrator or in Tableau, like a fool. This is so flippin' easy. Like just being able to control the size of your donut hole. I think 50% is good. I think if you go any larger, this is my personal opinion. I have strong feelings about donut um, charts. If you go any larger than that, you're actually, it, it be, just use a bar chart. Because right? in that case, you, the percentage becomes less meaningful. Um, it would be more meaningful as a bar graph where you could see the line. I should put a tracer on my cursor. Looks like it's a little hard to see. Um, I think 50% is really the skinniest I would go for this because cause you want to bite in your donut. But you also want to be able to see clearly the, the percentage. You want that visual impact. So this gets a little fun um, if content intensifies. So much content right if, if, if you want a hula hoop chart then go for 75 okay you can do that i mean this is america you can do what you want personally i want a donut chart because i'm eating donuts so i'm going to go with 50 percent um you can choose a border collar border collar like a border collie color color words i don't know that a border color adds anything personally so i'm going to put it on none Maybe I did like that. Oof, oof, that pink's a choice. I don't know. 
I don't know if I like it or not. Let's let's change colors and we'll see. Um, so something really cool. I said to uh, none on here for the slice label. So you already have a label that's to the slice as illustrated here, but you can choose to have a different label. Sorry, this, well, it's kind of the same label. Um, on the actual chart itself. So here you can have the number of response. So this might be useful. So I, I often hear, you know, what was your end value? So if you think your shareholders are going to be cautious or curious about what your end value was for each item, you can go ahead and put something like this on so they can see that the end was 12 or 24.5 percent which is also pretty cool. So I had about a quarter of the respondents in the survey are professional games user researchers in the industry, which is pretty cool. <clears throat> to me, that was really important to have industry buy-in, not only because, um, you know, I, I want my lab to be industry standard, but also because, uh, uh, I, I'm, you know, if you had this dream of being able to create your own lab, what would you want in it? I choked on my donut. <clears throat> that's, that's the danger here. Um, you could also just change it to have percentages on there. I think that's redundant. You already have your percentages there. So instead, you could just have the value. I worry that if you just have the value, though, that this could confuse your viewer because, wait, eight, but it says 16%. You know, the value isn't really clear that eight of the respondents were faculty or staff. Um, and if I had bothered to update my SPSS license, what I would actually be doing is going through here and cleaning up the data. I guess I could do it in sheets. Um, hmm. I don't, so, <laughs> for example, so I have a little bit, uh, I should be doing some data cleanup, to be honest, because I have Friendly Games Academic at another institution. Um, that I should actually recode into being faculty or staff. What I'll probably do is make these two slices the same color to indicate that someone self-filled in something different, but really, I didn't specify that faculty or staff needed to be at the University of Utah, right? So here you can go and... Uh, Go into your slices and you can actually change the color of your slices. So here's the different slices I have. You can imagine that this would be a real nightmare if you had, uh, you know, 20 slices. That could be terrible. I have an example, actually. Let me pull this up real quick. Let me see if um, I can pull it up. And eh, it's probably, I think it's on my laptop. So I have an example where SPSS will, if, if I ask like students' favorite games and I have 60 respondents, I'm going to get probably 50 different answers. Um, there's high, high heterogeneity in that particular sample size for that particular question. Um, I wonder if I can click on it and change it like this. Uh, so that would be a nightmare to do this with. So let's do this one. Let's see what it looks like if I change. How is that darker? It doesn't make sense. That's the same color. Well, why did I not make that the darkest? That's very bizarre. OK, let's go back and change this so that the colors match. Why? That is really strange. Okay, so that says it's the darkest, but it's clearly not. Hmm, is it because... I... Hmm. That looks like it's the same. Okay, all right, well, it's being weird, but, you know, for the amount of velocity we can do with this, it's worth it to be weird. What the crap just happened? Yeah, no, let's... Okay. That's kind of cool that you can click on it and change the color, but... Um... Okay, let's do student. We'll just go down the list and change the colors to be a bit more on brand. Um, the problem with using a set color palette, you're going to see in a minute. Um, it's kind of weird how they divided this up. I don't love that it's not in a numerical order. There must be a way to do that. 
Okay, let me figure, we'll figure out if there's a way to put them in highest value to lowest value order, because that's what I would prefer. Okay, random weirdo on the internet. There were two, two people that had that response. So the full response is cut off here because it's quite long, but it's um, random weirdo on the internet that had some time to kill and Reddit wouldn't refresh. I try and add humor. Thanks to Elizabeth Zelly, if she's on. Hi, Elizabeth. Uh, Zelly uh, gave a fantastic talk at this year's Games User Research Summit where she talked about the importance of humor. What the crap? Why are you not changing? I just changed you. Change. Um, you know, survey should be a conversation with your participants. Why did now it change both? Why did it do that? Hmm. All right, so I thought this was a really handy tool, and it's looking like when you want, I mean, the customization options for this is awesome, but when you actually go to do it, it looks like it's a little bit less user-friendly, shall we say. Okay, where is professional games user researcher? Let's change that color. We're running out of colors, so I get to be pink. Then we have um, otherworldly and vaguely terrifying. I mean, to be fair, I did ask. I... I define myself as, right? That was the question. And then here were the list of options. But some individual chose to define themselves as otherworldly and vaguely terrifying. So good for them. Um, so we're running out of, of shade. So look at this, right? So what is the problem with this chart? Like <laughs> there are numerous problems, right? But uh, like just at a glance, if you got this emailed to you and you opened it up, your first reaction would not be a positive one. So this is an important lesson that I try and teach my students with, right, cheese crows, the colors are indistinguishable. So when you're doing data visualization, you have to strike this delicate balance between, uh, oh, it, God help us if we remove the, the strike, right? If we remove the outline, check this out. <laughs> Like that's just a fart noise. That is a visual representation of a fart noise at this point. Like that that's garbage. So I'm glad I put a, a stroke on it because I said strike before, sorry, I meant stroke. <laughs> Which I might be having one now. Um, I'm not, don't worry. <laughs> but our branding here at EAE, as you saw in the survey, which is all red, and in the, whoops, in the question, sorry, if this makes you feel sick when the screen moves too fast, I apologize. Just wanted to get down here. So when we look at uh, like EAE Red, we're very much red themed. So there's always this kind of push for me to brand our, not an external, my boss doesn't like tell me, if you don't brand your survey results, you're garbage. Like that doesn't happen, right? But it looks more professional if you do use branding in your write-up. But the problem is, is that that red paint, well, first of all, that red paint is under atemporal and timeless in our paint picker color. Jeez, I have no idea where this came from. This thing is unwieldy. Um, but there's not enough variation, right? So it might make for a pretty wall and great branding in your studio, but it's not going to make for an easy to read donut chart. Also, the more bold colors of the palette draw attention away from the softer colors, says right click man. Exactly. Which is probably why, um, I wonder if there's a way to revert. <laughs> I should have looked at that first. <laughs> oh, 3D mode. That's sicko mode right there. <laughs> what does maximize mean? Oh, that looks like trash. Oh, this is fun. I'm so glad we're exploring this together. Um, yeah, so the bold colors, your eye is naturally drawn to bold colors, which makes it look like four for me. I don't know about you guys, but four stands out way too much. Four almost looks bigger than eight, and it shouldn't. It's half the size of eight, but because of the color choice that I picked, eight is a darker color and therefore for, you know, stands out more. We don't want that. You can also, <laughs> Donut Design 101, yeah. Speaking of, I should eat more donut. Um, you, I mean, this is how people kind of fudge charts and graphs, right? 
Here's my dog. Again, it's maple, in case you were curious. I don't know that maple's my preferred donut flavor, but it's a good one. I was really thinking about pancakes. Okay, so you could add, you could fudge this, right? Like if you wanted to make uh, a certain category stand out and look more important, you could easily do that by like changing, um, let's see, we could take, like the four is a good example, but we could take like the 20, the students, and if we change that to a really bright red, that looks like 50% of, of respondents, right? It's only 40%, but just that bold flash of red makes it look like 50%. So if we wanted to make an argument that we should only pay attention to what the students had to say, which is an argument that, you know, I'm not totally opposed to, um, we could do this. I'm eating our maple donut. The most rewarding part of teaching, eating some donuts. I hope my blue Yeti is picking up like all the disgusting sounds of me eating. It's so gross. Okay, so we can change the title. I don't want it count of I define myself as. That doesn't make sense. And so we want just I define myself as. No, it is. I'm sorry, cheese gross. I won't eat anymore. That's <laughs> disgusting. My other option is some udon noodles, which I feel like there's a market for that. I feel like if I build my channel as like woman eating sloppy noodles, <laughs> oh, that title's a little bit too gross for me. I feel like there'd be, I would get a lot more subscribers. That's all I'm saying. I would make money, but at what cost exactly? Students are gods, right? Oh, ASMR. That's the, that's the word we're supposed to use to talk about people who like hearing sounds. All right, so this looks like I can change the legend here. That kind of just looks like I can change the font for it, which I'm not super interested in. Okay. So I was hoping I would be able to, under chart axis and titles, I would be able to um, well, eh. can change the justification of the title. But I was hoping I'd be able to change the order so that um, it would go uh, a descending value, so highest number to lowest number, but we're not able to do that. Okay, cool. So I spent way too long um, doing this, <laughs> but bless you all for being here with me. So let's not do trash. <laughs> There's other ways to do branding, right? If you don't want to stick with a hue or with a single color palette, um, what you can do instead, now I've had like far too much coffee. I'm like at the point where I can see the future, which is exciting. Insert techno music here. So how um, Google does this is actually pretty clever because then you could just go through and pick uh, based off of uh, uh, the amount of gray that's in the color. So if we don't want any one particular, okay, obviously that's not a great example, but if we don't want anyone to pick out or stand out, we can just go through here and do this. Okay, this is interesting. So this list is in some sort of order, which is not the list that's shown there. What are you gonna do? Cry about it, I guess. Um, this color palette I like to call baby poop. Because it very much looks like baby poop right now. I'm not a huge fan. And then uh, as an aside, I don't know if you all have ever gone to Adobe's color picker. So there we go. Very muted, right? At least it's more peaceful. Um, I'll show you this real quick. Color picker or color wheel. They just recently rebranded it. Okay, so it's color wheel. Um, if you want to, oof, oof, they've changed it. Okay, now it's just Adobe color color.adobe.com. 
We've been hard, uh, hard at work rebuilding and adding some surprises along the way. Create your perfect palette by choosing a base color and color rolls. Okay, okie dokie. All right, cool. Hmm. So um, the cool part about this is that you can pick any color you really like. So if I really wanted to, I can look on these swatches. My, if I can, why can't I hold all these swatches? Um, I could look on here and not, they don't have the hex codes because this is like real life and, <laughs> and not just graphic design. Um, but I could get something pretty close to it and then find complementary and contrasting colors. Oh, we should do black holes. You're right, right click man. We should have a black hole themed donut hole graph chart thing. Okay, so let's say I want to do EAE red. Let's go over here. Now this is um, a graph of analogous, analogous, analogous. This is a word I've read way more many times than I've said out loud and I'm doing great at Englishing today. Um, I'm using hand sanitizer, sorry. Allergies, my allergies are terrible right now. Oh, you can also extract from an image, that's cool. So I could take a picture and then it would tell me, ah, oh, crap, it reset. Okay, let's go over here. Okay, I'm gonna say EAE red is like, Actually, probably there. It's probably EAE red, I'd say. Do I have? No, I don't. Wait, my business cards. I could take a picture of that. Okay, so like, ugh, something like that color red is what we're going for. So I can find it on the color wheel and then I can go to monochromatic and that would just give me all the reds. Now this is pretty useful because there's enough uh, gradient variation in these reds that the chart wouldn't look like crap. The problem being that there's only five colors offered here. Here's a triad of um, equidistant colors on the color wheel. Complementary, of course, opposites on the color wheel. Compound is interesting. I don't know how they uh, calculate compound, but what I do love is it gives you the hex code. Um, does it give you also, oh, sorry, it gives you the RGB, sorry. Hmm. And the hex code. No, that's the hex code, yeah. That confused me for a second. They used to present RGB differently. All right, and their shades. Oh, and then you can just willy-nilly pick whatever you want, I guess. So um, the reason I bring this up is it's really useful if you're doing style guides to, uh, like for UIs, for user interfaces, for a style guide, I include this in there. All right, what am I doing? Yes, this. Okay, so this looks like crap. This still looks like crap. We're like an hour in and it still looks like crap. I use this all the time at the UX UI boot camp I went to. Oh, that's good to hear, right click man. See, it's like, it's super useful and it's kind of like, I still run into people who don't know about it. I still run into artists who are like, what? And it's just so useful for taking a quick screen grab and throwing it into a, a style guide document. I don't know how to make this better anymore. <laughs> it also feels like there's more blues than there are reds, but anyway, I should have kept it bright colored. I don't hate this red, so we're gonna use that as a starting base color. Um, let's see. I'm going to use something a little more muted. Nope. Okay, let's go back and change this. Okay. We're going to keep it in the reds-ish. I think I just want to take out the blues, really. Actually, might change that. Let's change that one. I don't think these are bright enough. And it's gonna be too drab. Okay. We're gonna. I'm gonna change. I am gonna do the trick where I change them both to the same color to indicate that. Technically, you can do. Like really, it's nine. Even though this is friendly games academic at another institution, they're still faculty. So I'm going to count them. So even though they're two separate bars, I'm going to use the same color to indicate that they go together. Okay, 
Let's do professional game developer. Uh, yeah. 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 Okay. I wonder if that works. It was working and then it stopped working. That didn't work. That's very strange. Hmm. Wish I could just go back to default. Restore factory settings. <laughs> this also looks like trash. I hate this. I hate all of this. Can I just delete it? I bet I can. Boop. Tight. And then when you're done, you can just delete everything. <laughs> okay. This is good because I'll show you how to do it from here. Boop. It wants to default to a bar chart. So this is another good um, conversation to have. It's like, why not use a bar chart? Oh, I didn't see Friendly Games Academic in another institution far away who didn't who got to do this herself once for her own lab and then was told plans were changed and never materialized. Oh, that's heartbreaking. I didn't realize that was the full descriptor of the, oh, oh. Single tear. This is for you, my fallen sister. He almost achieved a berry blast donut. Oh, we should. I'm tempted to make them like actually donut, like do a donut and sprinkles, good snack, bad snack, themed. I was just going to brand it like EAE. But crap, that's a good idea. Thank you, right click man. All right. We'll just Photoshop some sprinkles on. Why not? This is America. Okay. See, this is the default. I don't know how I feel about the default. Okay, customize. Donut hole. What did we say? We land on 50? We land on 50. Okay, so let's change this color. Um, I kind of... No, we're not doing that. Yes, okay, cool. We're back to where we were. This is good. So let's... Uh, what color is that? I want it to be the same color. Is it not letting me do the same colors? It like slightly variating the shade. That's garbage. Variating. That's not a word, right? Making variances in the shade. Or is it just because it's selected? No, it looks slightly different, doesn't it? Hmm. Oh, we need to put an outline on. Border color. Boop boop. I wish it would let you control uh, the thickness of the border. It's kind of lame. That doesn't. All words are fake. Everything's meaningless. Ow, what do you think of this color palette? This is the default one. I kind of want to change it, but I also um, have stopped caring. <laughs> okay, I'm going to copy it and I'm going to try and paste it into my Word document. And I don't know how that's going to go. Oof. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Why is the text so light? Oh, let's turn off. Let's, let's do, let's make this in front of text and see if, yeah. Okay. So I can make it a little bit larger. That's not great. It almost looks like Google Chrome. It looks like the icon, right? I'm with you. Okay. I thought someone subscribed to me. I just got a notification, an email notification. So be like, really? If this gets me subscriptions, I'll never have to eat ASMR noodles. <laughs> I'm up to nine viewers now. That's good. I'm so happy you guys are spending your lunch breaks with me. And I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm foregoing eating my donut on your behalf. <sighs> I hate this. This looks like trash. All right. I need to change it, but I don't know how. 
it's too chromey and um i don't ugh, that's just not it's also the layout so i was going to change the font right here's another pro tip oops click the wrong thing or you can eat more noodles. If anything, I should be eating more noodles. Gabe, you won't even eat my, the noodles I have here. I was gonna, it's like a microwave soup thing and you don't like tofu. Um, what was I gonna look up? I was going to look up. Oh yes, defont. This is probably an oldie but a goodie. You guys probably know like way cooler websites than this. But this is my favorite go-to because you can um, search by, uh, used to be, oh, they, the, the layout hasn't even changed. It's just I don't remember how to do it. So you used to be able to search for um, fonts by their usage rights. So there are free fonts that people put out there just like, you know, use it if you want, I don't care. And there are other fonts that are like, hey, if you're gonna use this professionally, please purchase a subscription or please purchase it for like $1.99. Um, <laughs> Sean Wanderer, your name is in blue on black on my screen, so it's hard to, to read. Great, I come for geeking on interior decorating and data analysis and I get cravings for donuts. It's my life. Um, yeah, so you can download fonts for free and mo most of them. So they are very good about showing your copyright. So if you look over here on the right, here it says free for personal use. So you can download and you can also choose to donate to the author, which is pretty cool. So I come here all the time to get different fonts. So my idea was I was going to make the font, I'm just putting in text now to get the general layout and then I was gonna put the font, uh, you know, make it fancy, make it look good. So the reason why I don't like this chart is because the font's like impossible to read and I don't know that I can change that and I also wanted to have it like kind of like smooth and suave and in, in the corner there but you're right we should get back to furniture stuff so when you report data I clicked the wrong thing again <laughs> make sure you're doing that um, when you report data for me personally the thing I try to stress is that the most important thing is uh, you know what what does your shareholder stakeholder what do they actually care about do not report things that they don't care about and report them in such a way that you can easily see what you need to do right if you come to me and say hey Ashley I need you to get a loaf of bread from the store I'll go sure I will go to the store and get you a loaf of bread if you come to me and say hey Ashley we need groceries okay, like, do you want me to get you groceries? What kind of groceries? I don't know, you know, that doesn't give me a whole lot to go off of. So if you think about that and being really specific for what kind of data you want to present, your report will be much clearer. So in this case, um, oh, I'm gonna butcher Swedish. Technically, jag pratar lite svenska, but like, in reality, vimle? I'm not sure how that word's pronounced. And I'm assuming it's a, Swedish town, right? Isn't that how Ikea names their furniture? Okay, so I could put this pie chart. I could, you know, make it look sexy in this um, Google Sheets, and I could put it into the document. But do I really, does the person who's going to be ordering furniture, which is probably me anyway, do they actually care that more people preferred Vimle than did Kiplan or Landis Corona or Lindholm or whatever, you know, we have a whatever's easiest to clean response, which is valid. Or do they care about what it looks like? So let's go back to the questions. Oh man. Okay, so I'm not necessarily gonna go out and buy Vimle specifically, but I want an idea for what type of couch, like what's the general couch look that people liked? Vimle is so plain, you guys. Um, that's a little heartbreaking. Okay, what was number two? Number two was Landis Grana, which looks like... Ah, oh, that's the other plain one. I really like this one, but Crush Velvet, oof. Oof, you get Dorito dust on there. You're in for bad times. Okay, so let me... So how I'm going to actually report this 
what I actually care about is whomever is doing the furniture order. Son of a... Oh, this is a problem with having a laptop and a desktop. Um, I'm going to have to do this. So I'm going to make a new file and save it in my pictures. And you don't need to see all my business. So we'll call this Gur Lab. And then I'll save Vimla in there. And then I will open my new folder. Drag it here. Okay, so now we see Vimla this there. I, I had saved all these pictures. Lindum is your favorite, which is right like that. But that's like something I would have in my house, cheese crows. Like that's not necessarily the best for a lab, which is heartbreaking. Okay, so the thing I actually care about, what did I call this? I called this living room area. Okay, so living room area. I don't care about that couch, like at all. <laughs> but also, I don't care if we get that specific couch. You know what I'm saying? So, dang it. We're going to worry about layout later. Uh, did I call it a couch or a sofa? I want to be consistent. Oh, I call it a sofa. Okay. So all I want to report is that this was the most popular and it had 36% of the vote. Oh, duh. Good responses. <laughs> so many tabs. There's tabs within tabs. I hope you guys like tabs because we got tabs and then we got more tabs. Get into it. Okay, 36.7%. We'll put Vimle with 36.7%. Vimle was the most popular style of sofa with 36.7% of the votes. So now a place for butts. <laughs> oh, I should have called it that. That's hilarious. I love that. All right, because that's all I care about, right? Like, I don't care about the other sofas. I don't even necessarily care about this one. I mean, I might go on to Ikea and order it because it's easy, but I might try and find a secondhand one. Actually, I'm not a super huge fan of secondhand hand, uh, beds and sofas, you know, soft, I guess bed bugs, right? Like, unless it has like removable, bleachable covers. I'm kind of nervous. I don't like the idea that lots of butts have been on a place where my butt's going, which, like, whatever. I take public transportation. It's fine. Okay. Anyway, um, I got really good feedback as well, which I kind of want to share here. Um, so they like the style of Kiplin, one respondent, but it's busy fabric. So dark is good for cleanliness, which is a good point. Um, and the cover is washable, but there's, you know, if it's too busy, it's going to be distracting. And a few other uh, people mentioned that. Um, so here's another respondent who said darker colors are better, but the cushions on Vimla look comfortable. Yellow is kind of a weird color. Um, maybe getting pet proof, bleh, bleh, pet proof fabric treatment would make it easier to clean. Scotch guard all the fabrics, right? So this is something that I hadn't considered, but it makes perfect sense, right? Scotch guarding fabrics needs to happen if you're going to have a lot of people on the sofa eating and drinking. Um, so I, I guess if I wouldn't match this, they'd be talking about the Vimle. Most similar to what participants have at home. Not trendy and doesn't cause attention to itself. Which brings up a really good point. If you want to have your user research lab look like it's in a home, if you want to try and diminish outside variables and make people feel less like they're in a lab and more like they're in their home, which is what I'm trying to do, then you want to get a sofa that maybe isn't so glamorous, but looks like what the average person would have in their home. Maybe a little nicer. Something easy to clean like leather. <laughs> I wish I had the budget for that. I mean, I have a budget, but it's not a leather sofa budget. See you later, right click man. Thanks for tuning in. I think you're gone already, but bye. <laughs> okay. Um, comfy over aesthetic for better experience. Whichever one looks like the most comfortable to sit on. 
Yeah. Uh, Vimalay looks like it has the most back support, which is important for players who may be sitting down a lot, making, waiting, playing games. Uh, I like this comment. Garish equals good. I'm with you. I am with you. Okay, coffee table for the pudding of coffee. Not for the pudding of butts, but for coffee. So here we have 36.7%, which is the same proportion as the last one, voted for the Listerby. Let's find out which one's Listerby. All right. I like the Stockholm. But. All right. So, again, uh, I'm going to save this image. Um, the same kind of rule. Oh, okay. Now you're going. Bye. Uh, the same kind of rule applies for um, this option. When I look at the responses, I'm almost more interested in and more curious about why. So people pointed out that you want storage, right? And it should be low enough for people to put their feet on, which I don't love the idea of buying something specifically for people to put their feet on. However, Let's be real, if I want people to treat it like their house, that's what they're gonna do. Um, so Lister B was the most popular style of coffee table with 36.7% of the vote. Now coffee tables, I will just go to whatever thrift store and get. Because, like, you can't really get bed bugs from a coffee table. You might get some wood lice. Is that a thing? I don't know if that's a thing. Uh, oh, and also this layout, like, super sucks. So what we can do instead, my idea was, and this might suck. I haven't tried this out yet. This is my first time doing a report with, like, images that I haven't made. So typically when I do a playtest report, I do, uh, uh, no, I don't want that. I want, how do I, oh my gosh, finish a thought, Ashley. Uh, why is it not letting me, I don't want it in line with text. I want it in front of text. Why didn't it just let me, whatever. Okay. Um, same thing for you. Where's the bring to front option? Just have to do it through here. Weak sauce. Okay. Oh, is there a way to uh, picture tools? I want to get rid of the background. How do I do that? Uh, format, maybe? Colors and lines, size. There's a way to do it in uh, PowerPoint. Why isn't there a way to do it here? There's position, brightness, contrast, recolor. Well, that is weak. I don't want to open up Photoshop. Set transparent color. <gasps> Ooh, look at that. So we just learned something. I just figured it out. So you go to uh, recolor and set transparent color. I know, mind blown, right? Ha ha. Take that Photoshop. Embrace my laziness. All right. <clears throat> So typically when I make a playtest report, I do all my own assets, uh, be they through SPSS or Google or Tableau or whatever software I'm using, I'll make my own graphs and charts and then just kind of build the layout around that. I'm not as talented as the people in the Gersh Summit that do our annual um, income report. Th their layout is like next level. If you haven't seen it yet, let's pull it up because you're all you're all interested in games user research. So uh, Of course, this comes up first. Uh, IGBA. There we go. I wonder if the infographic is up for this year yet. I don't remember. Okay, so if you're inter interested in games user research, like you need to come here. Sorry, it broke for a second. Um, oops. Resources. So they upload all their presentations as well, which is just phenomenal. Um, this year's isn't up yet, but you can go and watch all the presentations. This is such a fantastic resource for user researchers. I use it in my class all the time. There's a Discord channel. There's a LinkedIn group. There's a methodology wiki. Um, let's see. Here is the salary survey. Now, I can't 
Right. Okay. So the 2019 one um, isn't up yet, but this one is from 2017, 2018. And look at this layout. Oh, the font is great. The color palette's awesome. It's consistent. It's maybe not branded with IGDA colors, but it doesn't have to be, right? This is fun. It's playful. It's interesting to look at, and it gets the data across. Doing things like changing the font color for the values you care about, and then also doing these little call-out boxes. Ah, oh, chef kiss. Mwah. It's amazing. Like this is this is like my stretch goal. One day I hope. You know how artists will like fawn over other artists, be like, wow, like they're just amazing with oils and pastels, and I wish I could do that. I feel that way about infographics. <laughs> So whomever did this, I don't know if it was Seb or, uh, um, oh, here's the 2016, 2017 one. Oh, that's so cool. Yay. I wonder how far back it goes. Oh, I've only been doing a couple of years. Um, like, it's just so good. Like, my compliments to the chef. I also love that they put a map here of all the different places where, so I like how that got streamlined. Again, if you're getting sick from my scrolling, I apologize. So here they did a whole world map, which is important because we're an international organization, but there's no data for Africa or South America as, as continents, right? Or Australia or Asia or Russia. So this seems like cruel to be like, don't include them because like we want to be inclusive, but at the same time for the purposes of layout, if you don't have the data, there's no point in saying, hey, we don't have data for this. Instead, you can just present the data you do have. And I'm like touching the screen, but you can't see because of where my camera's at. Hey, cool. Okay. So this is my stretch goal. Um, I've never done it with furniture like this, but you know, why not just set it up like a virtual living room? You know, because at the end of the day, what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to end up going to a thrift store with this document in hand, and I'm going to pick out the furniture you know, like rough guidelines, right? So I'm I'm probably not going to get those exact items, especially for like the coffee tables. I'd prefer to buy used, not only because then I'll feel less bad if people put their, their feet on it, but also because like recycle, being a hippie, peace sign. Okay. Uh, again, really good feedback. Storage section, right? Think about storage. Nice to have a shelf underneath. We've had times where we have to have equipment handy, but not blocking the tabletop. Fantastic advice. This is so useful. Anything with a white shiny finish chips terribly. Anything with hinges is going to break through use or only be in one position anyway, which is a good point. I haven't thought about that. I honestly, when I went on Ikea, I just kind of grabbed whatever looked interesting, but that's a super good point, right? Those hinges are going to be busted. Now, I don't know why people didn't like the Stockholm one. Like, I get the white paint chipping. I'm kind of partial. I kind of like the faux mid-century modern, but whatever. Okay. All right, let's go into the TV stand. Oof, divisive. A small, a marginal lead with the Leotorp, which looks like this one. Save that image. I, I'm discovering what the results are at the same time y'all are. So if I'm like, ooh, that's why. Um, some people commented on the best. Uh, I did look through the comments before, but I didn't. I just skimmed through the results like this, so I wasn't looking like, oh, which TV stand is that? Also, the, there's no TV. Um, there is. <laughs> there will be a TV, but that's a separate purchase, and I don't have a whole lot of control there's no point in being like which tv should i buy because it's not a stylistic thing that's a functional thing and it's gonna be like whatever costco has on sale right uh okay so um hidden storage is better than open storage because it hides your mess so that's a, a good design tip however other people brought up um that you want to actually i can't remember Okay, here, uh, someone wrote that you actually want to see the consoles. Is it back here? Uh, I could have sworn I read it somewhere. 
So you want something with easy access to plug and unplug consoles. You might have to change or move those more often than expected. You don't want this to be a hassle. Have it look neat and not distracting. Um, but someone mentioned that you actually want to see the, the console light, right? You want to see if the console's on for easy, quick diagnostics. So something that you can see actually visual, visually the consoles. Um, but then, so some folks say they advise against open storage because it's messy, right? Um, but if they're closed, there's less dust. If they're open though, you have to worry about heat, um, coming off of the console. Like my PS4 kicks out a lot of heat. I'll be honest. Like I would probably need if we're going with, oops, where'd it go? If we're going with the Leotorp, oof, let's fix that real quick. Uh. This is so weird. Word is just really weird. Why am I using Word? I don't know. Oh, let's see if we remember how to do this. Let's go to the picture tools, recolor, set transparent color. Oh, good. I was worried because it's kind of white. I was worried that I was just going to delete the whole thing. Invisible TV stand. Woo. <laughs> um, let's see if I can flip this. We can. Yes. Okay. So we're gonna flip this. I should do, you know, I should do a different layout. Can I also rotate this? Yes. Let's do page layout. Let's do landscape. This is better. Like, don't be afraid of doing landscape. You know, it, we're so trained to all of our papers and documents are like, you know, portrait. Branch out, do landscape. Why not? What's what's preventing you? The police? No, I don't think so. So just do it, like Nike says. Uh, this is still a little weird. You know, I don't hate it. If I put like a fun, colorful background, I think this could work. I think this is a decent way to present everything. I can also resize the furniture, but I kind of like the detail. What I might do later, I'm running out of time because I have a meeting in 15 minutes, but I might actually put like little call out boxes with quotes with the participant feedback for why, again, I'm pointing at the screen. <laughs> I can't see it. Use the mouse. Okay. Uh, I might put out like a little call out box right here that has a participant quote about why you want um, open space. What I would probably do as well is I'd probably just pop off the, the back. Usually um, the Ikea furniture, but also like most TV stands, the part in the back is just, it's like a really thin piece of press board. I, I mean, this one could be different. This is why I have to go in person to see it, but it's typically a really thin piece of uh, press board that's just stapled on and you could just pop it off and then you don't have to worry about your consoles overheating is my idea with that one but okay so that was 28 point something 28.6 ah crumbs what was it called leotorp leotorp why would you put my font up there Leah Torp was the most popular, and I will fix the, the writings a little. Try. Popular style of TV stand. And I think actually we're going to wall mount the TV anyway, but like the stand is pretty much just to um, store uh, storage for controllers, games, consoles, you know. Um, Leotorp is the most popular style of TV stand with 26, crap, was it 28, 26.8, 20, 28.6, dyslexia, 28.6% of the votes. All right. All right, now we're in the PC testing area. Boom, done, easy peasy. So what I'll do is I want to do a page break. Am I actually going to do, does anyone actually, 
two real page breaks <laughs> in Word. Whoa! Did you know you can control you can control the placing of a picture by clicking on it and then using your arrow keys? That's freaking weird. Okay. Well, no! I don't... Did I not bring this forward? I want it above the text. I want to do a page break, but I don't want it to... If I do a page break now, it's going to shift everything because my cursor's up there. You know what you should use? Not Microsoft Word. <laughs> you should use like, you know, like Adobe Layout or like a program that's meant for doing layouts. Alas, here we are. Okay. It freaking is in front of text, you beehole. Sorry for the strong language. I'm annoyed. Oh, okay, now it's fine. Awesome. Okay, insert page break. Look, look, we did it right for once. <laughs> okay, PC, what do I call it? PC area, PC testing area. PC testing area, and then we'll do desks. I kind of, so I think Zelly had the recommendation that I just make my virtual lab in um, House Flipper. It's like this close. I might do it. Why not? Especially since you can change the layout. So, well, I guess you can do that in Sims too. I'm just a little bit obsessed with House Flipper. So I kind of want to make my virtual lab in House Flipper just so you guys can see the layout. And then... Um, you know, why Why not do a virtual walkthrough? I don't even have to do it in an engine, right? Like, I'm not even making assets in ZBrush. Like, this is so, like, I have a game where I can essentially do that, so why not? Okay, this is, like, whew, tester desks. Strong opinions. 60, almost 60% when the B can't. So 57.1%. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to be lazy. Work smarter, not harder. Especially since I have to remember the spelling of the desk name. Okay, so 50, boop, 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 57.1. Okay, let's see what the B can't, B can't, it can't be pronounced B can't, that just sounds silly. That's what I'm pronouncing it as. Ooh, oh. Surprising. Is this the adjustable one? I think this is. Okay. So I think this is why this was voted um, numero uno, because it is adjustable, which I don't know if you can tell. Oop, nope, I don't want to edit it. I don't know if you can tell from that picture, but that was the one that had the little crank handle where you could edit it. Oops. So it looks like that. Uh, maybe it wasn't. I guess you can see here, maybe there's like the little holes that you can pop it up or pop it down. Oh, you know what I'm thinking of? I'm thinking of a totally different one. Okay. Do, 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 do. All right, there's our desk. Let's change that picture setting. I don't know why I can't just, whatever. I feel like that should be um, the subtitle of Microsoft Word. I don't know why I can't just, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, let's go to format. Remember our new trick, set transparent color. I feel like I'm getting like $30 more out of my Microsoft Word. I'm pretty sure I don't pay for it. I'm pretty sure the university does, but I feel like I'm getting really good ROI <laughs> on this. <laughs> uh, okay, so. Uh, oh, let's look at the responses because there were really, there were, was really good feedback on it. As soon as it loads. So you want minimum knee bonking opportunity, good amount of surface area. As RTA is that, what's RTA? As RTA as that pink desk is, gotta go practical. I super put the pink desk on there because... I kind of want it. <laughs> I would like, I'm, oh, there was a moment, I had a moment where I was like, pink 
everything. And then I thought that's like the worst idea ever. <laughs> just be really jarring. Like I just want to live out my Barbie Malibu fantasy right now. Just have like my Malibu house, the pink Cadillac in the driveway. What does RTA mean? I don't want an urban dictionary yet on the stream. So please tell me if you know. Okay, get a desk with wheels in case the university decides to move you. <laughs> There's someone who's faculty. <laughs> There's someone who's had that problem before. I love it. I love it so much. These comments are just golden. Uh, I've had a camp before. Good sturdy boy. I mean, I still have it. My boyfriend does anyway. <laughs> uh, Mike is so tiny. Okay, so the reason why I looked at Mike. For camp feels like a does from high school, which I feel like does not set a relaxing, chill environment. That's fair. The reason I was looking at Mike, which I'll show you, is because I was thinking of having dividers, making them like very limited cubicles, but I feel like that's super small, even for that purpose. The space I have isn't huge. Do I have my, hold on, maybe I can show you. The layout. I didn't even include this. I should have. Okay, so also pro tip, if you want to get really good at um, interior design, use Photoshop for all your, your layout space planning. I probably have this somewhere. Do I have this somewhere? Maybe I do. Ah, I put it on my donut. It's going to get greasy. Where is it? Hmm. Oh, I have a whole freaking file for this. Okay, so I don't have to show you I hate how it opens in Explorer. Okay, so now you can at least see the layout. This layout might change a little bit, but I made this in PowerPoint in five minutes. Like seriously, just use the shape tool and PowerPoint if you just gotta mock something up really quick before a meeting. It works like a charm. So here's the window. It's kind of like an L-shaped room. Very Tetris blocky. Shout out to Gabe. Um, and this is where I had envisioned that TV stand, TV, which may or may not be wall mounted with the sofa. Um, this actually isn't to scale. If I got a love seat, then there'd be space here and here for uh, beanbag chairs. This would also be the accent wall that I would paint a fun color. This is how I had envisioned the computer, the PC testing. Um, these two units would have the uh, eye motions. Uh, face and eye tracking on them. These two would not. These two would be our base model PC gaming setups. Um, and these would be like carols or partitions between. That's actually not looking super realistic. This door also wasn't to scale. The door is actually over here because I did this from memory without actually having access to the lab. Um, so this frees up if the door is actually over here, which it is, then this frees up space to put the computer stations along the wall. This is actually a little bit longer than I was thinking. So we'd have space for a moderator station and then cabinets, filing cabinets to hold consent documents and participant forms over here. So I kind of want to keep this to like a moderator station. The moderator station, the desk could be flipped if, you know, they want to be able to look at I don't, I don't, if I'm moderating a test, I'm not going to be sitting at a desk. With the exception that the eye tracking and face tracking software has to have a moderate, not to, it doesn't have to. We have a moderator station where you can see what the participant sees. So in that case, I'd be there. But usually if I'm doing an observation, I'm kind of walking around the room. Um, yeah, so this is kind of the layout. So I was envisioning these small, like, Mike desks. But since the room's bigger than I was thinking, now there's more space, I can have a larger, you know, one of these or so. Something like that. Okay, let's do chairs. Ooh, 50-50 split. None of the above. Think about different body shapes and sizes. None of these egads. These do not look comfortable to sit in. Four hours at a PC. 
I have no opinion on chairs in general, but as a short person, as long as I can adjust height. Um, so let's go back and look at the chairs. But Elefiel and Langefiel were the two most popular, but very divisive. So this one and this one were most popular. So one of the points that was brought up in the comments um, that the, the respondent actually reached out to me through Facebook and, and filled me in even more was that, you know, kind of when we think of office chairs, we don't think about different body styles and body types, but there are individuals, especially it's hard to tell from an internet picture. I don't know how wide this is. Um, so some individuals who are larger wouldn't be able to comfortably sit, right? That's pretty shitty. You don't want that. You don't want your tester to not only feel uncomfortable, but to feel body shamed at the same time. Yikes, right? That hadn't even occurred to me. I fully admit my bias and my perspective and being kind of clueless. But this is why we do user research, right? This is why we do research, because it helps take down our biases and show us new things. And, and you know, the knowledge and opinions of others is actually super important to design designing games, designing layouts of Gur Labs, designing everything. Um, the reason why I didn't do a survey on the layout of the Gur Lab is because last summer I went around and toured a whole bunch of Gur Labs and uh, different AAA studios and like it's not ideal, right? My setup's not the best, but it's what I could work with in the space. And the good thing about furniture is you can move it. So uh, keeping in mind most people play with PC uh, chairs that have wheels. So that was really important. Um, and not having arms was super important for accessibility reasons. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, change the, the draw, change the tie and pick the longe field. Then I'm gonna do a copy pasta again, same time. I didn't change that. That's funny. I changed the number, but I didn't change TV stand. Uh, desk. And then this is the most popular style of participant chair. Um, what is it? 38.8. Oops. 385. I should probably add in that was a tiebreaker, but... Um, for right now, I just want to get the asset in there. Boop -a doop boop boop. Where did it go? Okay, boop. Uh, I like how different the sizing is. Oop, I don't want to copy or paste there. Uh, picture. This takes so flippin' long. I mean, it still takes less time than it would to open up Photoshop, so don't get me wrong, but a little bit a little bit much okay I wonder if I can make it bigger ooh look at that JPEG artifact Whew. that's what mama likes <laughs> ow let me click this one okay I wonder if I can bring this one forward can I do that yeah 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 look at that that is a dang fine chair desk setup. So another thing is I didn't ask about PCs because again, I have no control over that. So my, my the last point I'll leave you on before I have to go to my meeting is that don't ask about things that you can't change or you don't care about. I could have asked what PC reg I should have, but I can't change that. I'm given the ones that we order in bulk from the university. So there we go. Okay. Oh, uh, just to end, Sean Wanderer says, RTA is reluctant to acknowledge road traffic accident. Yeah, we're gonna have to Urban Dictionary RTA and figure that out. So I need to go off to a meeting. Thank you all so much for joining me. And if you're not already a follower, please uh, follow. I typically stream Think Aloud protocols for games that are already released, um, but I do user research on this channel. Um, this is the first time in a long time I've done any kind of data visualization stuff. Um, but yes, please follow, 
like, subscribe, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you so much for joining me, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I will probably be doing this during my lunch breaks for uh, the rest of my life. <laughs> Just the next couple of weeks until I prepare this document. So I'm going to work on it on my own, but, you know, keep tuning in and you can see how I change the document and, like, make it prettier, make a background in Photoshop maybe. So thank you for watching me do donut charts, and hopefully you learned something today. Um, I will see you. I'm not streaming this Thursday because I'm. It's Easter. It's not Easter on Thursday, but whatever. I typically stream games on Thursday nights, so I'll be back the week after that. I haven't decided what I'm playing. I don't know. Whatever. Okay. Oh no! I fell off more than I could. Okay. Bye. Have a good day.